I keep a vlog over here away from the music side. It, it might go everywhere. <laughs> might go everywhere and just be fucking thrilling. <laughs> or go nowhere. Um, I'm going to talk about friendship in this one. And uh, I put how I had to repair how. And uh, I uh, put him over here. I'm working on him right now. I uh, having a cup of redneck high tea. It remind. It struck me. This situation I'm in. It's gonna sound like I'm a Trekkie in this one. <laughs> I'm not actually. Well, kind of. But the early Trekkie when I was a kid, they seemed so magical. All those episodes, you know. But there was an episode of Star Trek where. Captain Kirk, <laughs> follow me. Captain Kirk was, uh, and it might, it'll go no more than 15 minutes. Where's my watch? Uh, it's 1036. Uh, so Captain Kirk was, uh, uh, they were traveling in space. <laughs> <laughs> this is seems like a reach. They were that you know they were in the Enterprise and this other race of advanced super like when didn't they run into a super advanced race? The Metrons came up. And anyway, my situation reminds me of this. They took Kirk out of Captain Kirk out of the Enterprise and they uh they uh put him on a planet and he had to fight this big green lizard, <laughs> stupid looking lizard too. Anyway, uh, Captain Kirk, uh, you know, I, I actually did a little comedy bit about that, the arena, the Star Trek episode. So they put him on a planet, the Metrons did, this sort of all-powerful race, and uh, he had to fight a lizard to the death. One of them would not leave alive. And, uh, anyway, so there's that. <laughs> That's the setup. Reminds me of the situation I'm in, in a way. So that people from around the world can look in. They couldn't communicate with Kirk either. And at one point, they let him watch. Everybody on the Enterprise got to watch Captain Kirk as he was supposedly about ready to be killed. You know, they came on and said, your captain is losing his battle. We will allow you to watch. You know? <laughs> I don't know what what they were thinking was. But anyway, um, it uh, there was a real neat part in there because you realize all those people watching him were his friends, you know. And uh, there was a neat part in there where... Uh, Mr. Spock, uh, Captain is the Captain Kirk's making a uh, uh, oh a cannon <laughs> out of WD-40 and paper clips. Basically, he's making a cannon out of uh, some stuff he found on the planet's surface. And at one point, he says, "You know, the planet's surface is filled with diamonds and rich with minerals. Yet I would trade them all." For a hand phaser or a good solid club, <laughs> you know, just he really has all these, you know, all all of life's greatest lessons are learned from the movies. You know, they're all the greatest movies are stories of friendship, and uh, when you really think about it, and it's one of the most complicated yet coolest relationships in life. You know, and uh, um. Anyway, I mean, I'll get back to Captain Kirk in a minute, but, um, and his plight. Uh, you know, in, in, in marriage, you've sort of made an agreement, like, I'll be in this. Uh, you know, and, and it's not like a friendship where you can sort of come and go and just flitter in and out of it. You know, it's, it's more, uh, um... permanent but um and family their family 
even if they're not your friends, they're still fucking family. <laughs> I curse sometimes. I love to curse. I try to do it when it has impact. That looks good, Hal. And here we go. But, um, you know, all the greatest movies. Shawshank Redemption, the story of friendship between, an unlikely friendship between a banker and a, and a murderer. Um, Forrest Gump, the story of, really, it's, some would say it's between the friendship between, or the relationship between Forrest and his mom, although really it's a story of, uh, the friendship between Forrest Gump and Lieutenant Dan, you know, and the, the, how that evolved over years. Um, uh, any movie, think of it, Spartacus, you know, uh, I'm Smarticus, <laughs> no, I'm Smarticus, uh, somebody had Smarticus username on the other night, but, um, it's hard to find real friends, you know, it's a tough relationship, and it's a cool relationship, you know, uh, friends tend to come and go. And, you know, I'm really very, very, very careful, and I expect the same from my friends. You sort of let them in on an intimate level, and you expect valid feedback from them, and usually get it, not always, you know, but who else can you go to to give, like, you know, balanced, loving, sort of gentle feedback? Sometimes it's best delivered gently, you know from a friend other times maybe more harshly but uh, it's uh, it's easy to uh, um, sort of lose track of friendships and begin to take people for granted and that kind of thing and I'm really very careful I'm, I'm good at being a friend I said somewhere in my vlogs and it's true if you want to be a friend listen you want to make a friend talk a lot of people have that's one thing I've usually I've been good at sometimes I have to force myself is in whether it's business meetings or in, in friendships or when things are really tense at coming in and saying Assessing the situation instantly and saying the exact appropriate thing for the situation, even if everybody else doesn't agree at the time, and some people won't. Uh, generally, I'm really good at that, and I don't just like jump in blindly. I really assess the situation first, you know. But um, and you know, so, sometimes we'll break the ice, even at my own expense, especially if I know I'm going to, like, sort of ease out of this circle of people, and that's not all that important. There's a lot of different levels to it, you know, but, um, it, uh, it's a relationship I'm really careful not to say anything disrespectful or offensive to the people that are my friends. And I expect the same from them. And, you know, I mean, you, you can't just block everybody or banish everybody from your life that says something stupid. But if it becomes a pattern and it's kind of abusive and subtle and it gets, it, they, it, friendships can grow into sort of, uh, you know, these dysfunctional things that should be severed. And that's the great thing about them, too. You can just go, you know, I was his friend. You hear, though, I was his friend. Now I'm not his friend, you know, <laughs> or as much his friend. Or we, we're not hanging out anymore, you know. Um, but uh, with the coolest part about that episode was they get on, on Star Trek, all of his friends get to watch him as he fights this battle, you know, this epic battle with this guy in a lizard suit, you know, <laughs> it seems so epic when I was a kid, you know, it looks stupid nowadays, but, um, it's still kind of cool, you know, Captain, <laughs> I'm going to get, you know, whatever, this big li smart lizard, too, <laughs> but there's a point where the captain is building a, uh, Star Trek, really, but one of the basis is, is friendship between Captain Kirk and, and Mr. Spock. And, uh, there's a point where he's building a cannon, and, uh, 
Spock recognizes he's picking up all the components to make gunpowder and he doesn't say anything and he doesn't get overly excited that's the good thing about Spock he doesn't get overly he's excited you know <laughs> he's but you just know he, he raises his eyebrow and he says coal and he realizes what the captain is doing and uh, more email but at that moment and that there's a lot of metaphors for life in Star Trek don't watch it anymore or anything have it for years when I was a child I did and, and we loved that shit you know but uh, when he says that he says Cole you know that this is these guys are friends and they that that this man this Vulcan <laughs> he knows his friend's heart and his mind he knows what he's doing he knows his friend might die on that planet too and he's next in line for the Enterprise so of with that much money involved in a ship and all the general contracting to build it you know of course they they paired them up just so you know but of course he knows his mind that's it. not only that he's his friend you know and he, he kinda has to know his mind um, it's exactly what he would have done you know and uh, it's uh, it's a t it's a, a tough relationship you know in the relationships I've had with women the best one I ever had it was like she was a beautiful woman but like 13 years older than me and I was in my 20s you know and here she was like pushing 40 and uh, smart great woman of course as I said before I fucked her over I hadn't you know I hadn't had that much experience and it wouldn't have worked out she's like 60 something now I'm, I'm 49 you know um, but um, she was she was a friend she managed to be a friend and in relationships with the best ones I've had with women and that was really the only one where she was really truly a friend because all kinds of love bullshit gets in the way of being a friend and I think that's probably the hardest thing to do in uh, a marriage is to be a friend consistently you know and because all of that bullshit of like either they loved me and wanted to possess me or I loved them and wanted to possess them and, and it just got it gets stupid it's hard to be a friend you know um, but uh, they are the friendships are really the coolest uh, relationships on earth because you can choose to be in those it's like a uh, just a bond of like honor kind of a thing you've sort of given your your unspoken word that I'm gonna be cool with you you be cool with me that's the way it is you know and it's tough um, but um, you know you can't you can't I'm 10 minutes in you can't always trust your friends. I had a friend, I should call him something else, but I'm old now, and uh, George, a video editor, he'll never watch this anyway, uh, and he's the most vanilla person you could ever meet, you know, he's like really not artistic, he thought he was, but really he wasn't, he was just executing playlists, but you know, at first I thought, well, this guy is a professional video editor, and in my business, CD manufacturing, I took out an ad every year in the recording industry source book, with my mastering manufacturing and graphics business, businesses for CDs and DVDs. I took out an ad in the industry source book, and that was a $10,000 ad, and they tended to last for two years. I believe the recording industry source book is now defunct, and uh, I just woke up, first cigarette of the day, first cup of tea. So anyway, I had designed an ad that was really snappy, really smart, very simple. As a lot of people know, simplicity works best a lot of times, very effective clean and he was over and he goes oh you're paying for full color right and I'm like yes ten grand man for this full page full color and he goes well go color full color all the way so I just took the first filter in Photoshop that I had and splashed it on the screen you know and he goes that's excellent that's it well I, you know I was impressed it was like in the mid 90s and and uh I was like, oh, he's 
you know, a professional video editor. Like I said, I later found out he was just executing other people's ideas, doing the technical part. He really is an artistic. Although you'll go far, I just saw he's doing all kinds of huge rock stars stuff. He probably shouldn't be doing, but I'm, I have a hunch he's still executing the just other people's ideas as an operator and not an artist. And uh, he really, his house is so vanilla, his cars, his, everything about is vanilla. There's no like pizzazz or flavor there, you know. <laughs> But um, anyway, I said okay, and it turned out the ad when I, uh, my judgment was off, and I trusted his opinion, and I shouldn't have, and that's tough. When when to know? I had to live with this stupid ad that all these kind of hippie kids called me about for the next two years. It didn't really have any money. A lot of people bought anyway, but it just looked like shit compared to the other corporate ads, you know. <laughs> and uh, I had to live with that, and that's cool, but. I think also valuing, knowing when to value certain friends' opinions, what they're good at and when not to. And then some people, like this woman I was with, had an overall ability to stand back. And even though she was madly in love with me, and it was one of those relationships where I loved her, but not like that fiery thing. I, it was like, yeah, I can count on her, and she's cool and, and sexy and neat, you know. Um, but not so much that she was an you know uh, a constant you know draw for other men to ogle and shit you know it was just perfect so and she didn't go flaunting it around she was real good and faithful I fucked her over <laughs> of course you have to when you're young you know but um, anyway yeah knowing which friends to trust about what but um it, it, that's a tough relationship, you know. I, I uh, the reason I say this is, I didn't expect to sort of feel like I have friends around the world, and quite, you know, like there's a few core group of them that uh, I look forward to hearing to hearing from, and 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 uh, I didn't expect that to happen. And it's kind of important for me to realize, like, you know. Um, the strong points and and the the uh, that each person has to offer and, and I have a few friends who you know it's kind of important for me to to sort of stick with people not stick with but uh, understand that what level people are on no matter what whether it's in music or physics or psychology and sort of go from there because you know, you can't really accept somebody's opinion in like an advanced nuclear engineering uh, problem who just has an opinion but absolutely no expertise. That's if I accept those kind of invalid opinions, then that's that's my own bad. Um, but Captain Kirk, you know, the thing about that too is. And what my situation reminds me of, I'm completely alone, don't ever talk to anyone, I'm here, people can look in from around the world, and often do, um, on my vlog and the music, because of the music, and, uh, you know, you're born alone, and, and, and you'll die alone, and I'm alone here, and it's great, I, I really enjoy it, all the psychic bullshit and garbage of people around you pretending to be your friends in your life. I've kind of figured a lot of that out too, how there's a lot of secret saboteurs around you. They're kind of like haters who don't reveal themselves on the internet. And their fondest wish is to fuck you up in any way they can because they're so fucked up, you know. To be able to stand above all of that and just go, huh, I see it now, clearly. But, you know, you're, you're, you're born alone, you die alone, and those... And but some passing through, you know, you have friends really more than more than anything else that'll be that'll have an impact on you. So it's a neat relationship, an important relationship. One I think I'm good at, but I do, and I think it's important, as I said. But it's it's I insist upon respect when it gets to where they're sort of chipping at the edges of respect, like kind of pushing the nickname thing, or or you know calling you some weird nickname that's not cool, or are you know getting haughty or huffy with you then you know I tend to go like okay you know dude you're pushing it you're pushing our friendship and they come and go but man they're such a cool thing because you get to choose who your friends are 
you know, and uh, all the other stuff is pretty much sort of laid out for you. But, you know, as I said, I, it was my own fault for accepting uh, this opinion from my friend George. Any opinion I take from friends, uh, I, I, I quantify and qualify every single in, piece of input I get on the internet. And, and all that's predicated by, in art, it's really tough, but you have to be able to go, yes, I don't care who says what, I know what I'm doing. <coughs> Always. <coughs> I always have, sort of, you know, and I think as you get older that becomes clearer. That's the great thing about being older. You know who you are and what you are more clearly and all the bullshit kind of falls away. You go, yes, I know, you know, somebody came by hating. I'm going to end in a second. Last night it was like, so, you know, you gave this a thumbs down, obviously just now, I can see it, and said, fuck you. It's like, what are your motives? Of course, you have some little bullshit band that, that isn't getting any hits and you want to play, but you guys suck, you know, and totally. And, uh, um, you know, and a thousand other people have posted, this is awesome, and you're posting, it's fucked, why don't you try something else with your life? And it's like, <clears throat> you know. So, uh, you know, I uh, qualify that by going, well, this is an official hater kind of a thing, you know. And, and I really, I think it's important in life to sort of uh, um, qualify the input you get. It's always your, your responsibility and your, your thing to just go, yeah. Uh, and I do accept all input, but I don't have to, to approve it all. But, you know, I, I, in the new year, I just wanted to say thank you to the people who stopped by consistently. And I'm not good at the touchy-feely stuff. Um, and I get to be the Captain Kirk character in this one. With the, it's as if Kirk were on the planet's surface and he can accept text messages, you know. Spock could text him the formula for, like, you know, uh, gunpowder. But, um... Yeah, so you get, you know, thanks for stopping by everybody that does consistently. I, I, uh, I value that a lot, and, uh, I'm not really good at saying stuff like that. So, you know, it's cool. It's really helpful. I guess the good thing about Spock was, uh, he, he, he didn't have the emotion. It's like Captain Kirk was sort of like a, they, they kind of they, they knew they were equals, you know. Uh, <laughs> he was like sort of a a Vulcan with passion in a way. <laughs> oh shit, Star Trek! I'm gonna do an ending. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh. I should probably do something weird on this, but I'll just go. I'll do Poltergeist, because I, I really like that one. <laughs> People, this friendship thing is clear.